Hey there, we're going to start off chapter 5 by talking about the relationships with what's going on within the triangle. So um, this section we're going to talk about mid-segment theorem and coordinate proofs. So getting into our vocabulary, the first thing we need to make sure we know is what's a mid-segment. So the mid-segment of a triangle is the segment that connects the two midpoints of two sides of the triangle. And within one triangle, we have three mid-segments. So what do those words look like? And just to remind you, if at any point you need to slow the video down or pause it to write something um, or rewind it, that is also available. So in my triangle, to find the mid-segment, I need to find the midpoint of two sides, knowing that the midpoint definition says it is in the middle of the segment and it creates two congruent parts on each side. So if I connect the two midpoints of two of the sides, then that segment I just created is called the mid-segment. So if I would happen to find the midpoint of this side and then connected, I would find my other segment and my third mid-segment. So that is what the mid-segment um, looks like and what we'll be working with today. The second vocabulary is called the coordinate proof. So this involves placing geometric figures such as squares, triangles, hexagons um, into a coordinate plane, remembering that the coordinate plane is the x-y axis. So getting into our theorems of this section, our first one talks about the mid-segment theorem. And the mid-segment theorem says, the segment connecting the midpoints, knowing that D and E are the midpoints, of two sides of the triangle is parallel to the third side and is half as long as that side. So we know now that DE is our mid-segment. And some terminology you might see is called um, DE is opposite AC. So DE is opposite line segment AC. This theorem also gives us parallel lines, so now we know that DE is parallel to AC. So that's one thing we can get out of this theorem. It, another thing we can get out of it is that DE, the mid-segment, is half of the side that it doesn't touch, or the third side of that triangle. So those are the three things that we can get out of this theorem. So let's go ahead and check out how we can use this in an equation or a problem. So we have a large triangular window with the segment shown. And in this window, we know that DF is a mid-segment. So DF is a mid-segment. Some things we might know, it is opposite. BC. So the mid-segment opposite BC is called DF. We also know now from theorem 5.1, um, DF is parallel to BC. So DF is parallel to BC. We also know that DF, our mid-segment, is half as long as BC. So using that information, we want to find the length of DF, and we know the length of DF is half of BC, or the side that it won't ever touch. So BC equals one half of 90, because BC is 90 inches. So we now know that DF is 45 inches. All right, moving on, we also have been told that EF, EF is our mid-segment. So from that theorem, we know that EF is opposite 
side A, B, so it will never touch this side of the triangle, A, B. We know that E, F is parallel to A, B because of theorem 5, 1. And last we know that E, F, our mid-segment is half of A, B. But what if we need to solve for one of the side lengths of the triangle? Well, we know that the side now of a triangle can equal two times our mid-segment. So we are going to multiply our mid-segment's length times two to find the side of the triangle. So AB is two times FE. So FE is 45, so we're going to take 2 times 45 inches to give us 90 inches for AB. Alright, using that information, we're going to come over here. And here is some other terminology you might see. The mid-segment DE can also be called the mid-segment opposite BC. So this terminology is very important for you to know so you can solve your equations correctly. So here's example 1a and you can stop this video and write down the problem. So we want to find the length of the mid-segment. So the length of the mid-segment says we want to be smaller than the side of the triangle and we want to be opposite EF. Well, we know that the mid-segment is created by connecting the two midpoints of the other sides. So we're going to go ahead and connect that, and we're going to call that JH. And we know now that JH is the mid-segment. We also know it's opposite EF. We know that JH equals half of EF. And the third thing we know is that JH is parallel to EF. So since we know that EF is 45, we can plug it into this equation. JH equals one half of 45. So we know that JH equals 22.5. Alright, go ahead and stop this video and do checkpoint number one and then we will move on. Alright, moving on to example number two. Again, using that mid-segment theorem. In the diagram at the right, we know that QS is equal to SP. And with that information, we know that S is the midpoint. By the definition, we know that the midpoint is halfway between on that segment. We also know that PT is equal to TR. So from this information, we know that T is the midpoint. So if we connect the two midpoints, we now know that ST is the mid-segment from what we learned. And we know the mid-segment is opposite QR, it's parallel to QR, and it's also half of QR. So now we know that ST is parallel to QR by the mid-segment theorem. Or 5.1. Alright, just a little quick review. If I have, um, I'm looking at PQ or QP, what is the mid-segment opposite of PQ? Well, if I connect the two midpoints, I know that VT is now the mid-segment. And if QP is 50, half of that would be VT, so that would be 25. Alright, go ahead and stop the video and do checkpoint number three, or number two. 
All right, here is checkpoint number two's answers. And we will move into example number three. So we are going to place figures in a coordinate plane. So the directions are place each figure in a coordinate plane in a way that is convenient for finding the side links. So when you see that, you should think from now on placing one corner at the origin so we know that the origin is always zero, zero. So it is easy to find the lengths of the horizontal and vertical segments and distance from zero, zero. So place one vertex at the origin and one or more sides, if you can, on the axis, the x and y axis. So in a square, let s represent the side length. So notice we are placing it in the origin and two side links are on the x and y axis. So normally we're going to go over some amount of units to place that, um, to get our ordered pair there. This time we're going to go over S units, so we would place it as S comma zero. Sometimes we can think of it as maybe two comma zero, um, but right now we're going to use S because it doesn't matter which, what type of um, square it is, it will always come out as S units. All right, we're going to go up S units that way. We can say this ordered pair is 0S or you know, normally we see it possibly as 0 comma 2. And since we go over S units and up S units, our fourth vertex is going to be S comma S or sometimes you would think of it as 2 comma 2. All right, and for an acute triangle, we will need three different variables because of three different amounts of lengths that we go. So again, placing it in the origin and one side on an x and y axis. So we're going to move b units to get b comma zero or, you know, normally we would possibly think of it as four comma zero, whatever un amount of units you want to use. And then we need to use two different variables because we're going to go over A units and up H units to find this vertex. And we're going to use two different variables because we're moving different um, units. So maybe we could think of this as 2 comma 3. So that ordered or that coordinate proof is for many, many different types and sizes of shapes. So in example three, we want to find the length or the distance of the diagonal and the midpoint. So just as a refresher, if you want to stop this video and write down your formulas, you can. We're going to find the distance of B, D. So we're going to put X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And we're just going to plug it in, so don't really make it any different than normal, s minus 0 squared plus s minus 0 squared. You would then get s squared plus s squared, which gives you 2s squared. And knowing how to break that down, square root of 2 times square root of s squared, well I can't simplify square root of 2. But I can simplify the square root and the squared. We know that s now comes out in front to give us s square root of 2. So that would be the distance of the diagonal of any square. So we could plug in s, whatever our length is, to get our diagonal distance. Now for the midpoint, again, plugging in the same way, s plus 0, comma s plus 0. So for any diagonal our mid of a square, our midpoint is going to be our side divided by 2, comma, our side divided by 2. So go ahead and stop it here and do checkpoints 3 and 4. And replay it when you get done. Here are the two answers for 3 and for 4. And then here is your homework. Feel free if you have any questions when I see you next to ask if you um, don't understand something, but until then, have a great day.